All right, welcome to part two. We're going to work on uh, adding the camera and moving the camera um, around with the mouse this time. So um, you can see we've got the setup just as we had in the first tutorial. Um, we have the main camera as a child of the player uh, and all the script is on the player. So if, if we want to be able to move the camera, we're going to have to have some kind of handle to that camera. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. I'm just going to show you the way that I, uh, I'm going to use this time around. So um, you can make a, a public transform. Um, so what does that transform? Um, and uh, we can store the camera in there. Now, if you call it camera, you'll get a little warning saying that it already exists. Transform. Um, um, so what we're going to call it is FPS camera. Um, what that public gives us um, inside of the uh, script is the handle that we can put the camera on. So. And when that all compiles, you'll see that the public FPS camera pops up in here. We're just going to drag our camera and the child camera onto that object so that we have now a handle to it inside of our code. So now that we have that, there is um, one more variable that we're going to create. Um, we're going to make a float variable and we're going to call it pitch. Um, the way that you do the camera, so I'll set that to zero. The way that you do the camera um, is that you actually rotate the main object um, with trans transform dot rotate um, along the horizontal, um, and you rotate the camera around the uh, its pitch, its own x-axis. So um, it would look a little bit less if I wanted to rotate the player. I would just literally just rotate the player around. Um, because you're rotating the whole player, the camera also moves with it. Uh, the and set it back to zero again. Um, so that one set the rotation back to zero again. And the the way that you move the camera is you move it independently of the player. So you only move the camera along its own x and y axis. And um, so it, you're allowed. The reason we do that is that we it means that we can clamp the value so that we can't go round and round and round and round um, when we move the mouse. So I'm um, just going to set those back to zero again. So you'll see that it was the X axis that was changing. So just doing that in script, um, we're going to start off nice and simple with getting the input and we'll use that. We'll do the X axis first. So we'll say, call this X mouse and uh, we're going to get the input from the mouse so it's again it's it's get access um, and this time we're using mouse x um, we should probably multiply this by some kind of value um, this will be the mouse sensitivity and we can refactor that in, in a little second so we'll multiply that by 10 just so that it's uh, a little bit faster and then we just use a simple uh, transform dot rotate now the this you probably know this already but the small t means that it's this transform the transform of this object that this script is attached to um, and there's different ways of um, passing in values to this i'm just going to say uh, i'm just going to use the three values so i'm going to say zero and then i want x mouse which was the input and then zero again um, by doing this, we'll be able to turn right and left. So um, if I was, it was exactly what we did earlier on when we were rotating just the whole player. Because the script is on the whole player, and um, when it does transform dot rotate, it rotates um, relative, uh, rotates that player object relative to the world. So you'll see if I play this one, it will, um, as I turn, I'm able to turn around. Um, the uh, pitch up and down uh, is a wee bit more complicated, but it's not as bad as it seems. So um, the pitch value that we had before, what we're going to do is we're going to change that pitch value. Um, now we're going to subtract it from the input. So input dot get access again, and this time we're going to use mouse y, and uh, it's the mouse up and down. And we're going to multiply that by. Um, by 10 again just so that we don't we're able to actually see the movement um, and now if you did this on its own uh, you'd be able to spin round and round so we're gonna have to clamp this value so and we're going to use this math function so it's pit uh, equals 
we can say mathf.clamp. Um, that gives us the opportunity to uh, choose pitch again, set the minimum value and the maximum value. I'm just going to put them at 45 degrees for now, uh, just so we can see it in action. Um, and then we need to actually set the rotation of the camera. Remember, we're setting the rotation of the camera now. So rotations are weird. Um, rotation values are held as quaternions. So I'm going to say um, quaternion cam rotation, just so I remember what it is. And then I'm going to create a quaternion from the Euler angle. So the Euler angles is the X, the Y, and the Z. So when I create the quaternion, I'm going to say how much by the the x which is going to be the pitch value and then zero for the y and zero for the z and um, then we need to just set the actual camera so we call the fps camera uh, public variable is the fps camera and it's the transform so we can go straight to setting its local rotation and um, if you try setting just rotation you'll get some weird results because it'll try and rotate relative to the world but we want to set it locally um, so the local rotation of this camera is just the x value that we're changing and we just make that because that's that expects a quaternion we'll just pass it that quaternion that we made from the Euler angle so in theory uh, this should all work if I just save it we should be able to see this in action this is nearly finished now we've got um, we should be able to see that we can move right left forward and back we can jump we can uh, we can turn and we're going to see some of the issues that have come with um, what we're already doing so we can look uh, up and down and we can move forward backwards right and left um, but what you'll see is that the movement um, when you do this is not relative to uh, the direction that you're actually facing so when we create these values in here and um, when we're getting the X and the Y we're moving relative to the X and the Y and we're just going to have to fix that. So we're going to solve that problem by um, transforming the vector that we are intending to go by the vector of the um, the player. So uh, it's actually not as bad as it sounds. It seems like a lot of maths but it's um, pretty simple. So I'm just going to get stuck into that code. So um, what we're going to do first up is just we're going to look at this vector. So what we have here is an x and a z component of a vector. Um, now we're going to solve another problem when we do this. But um, if I make a new vector three, um, and we'll call this uh, maybe move. Um, if we make this new vector three and we create it from these values, so we're just going to say new vector three, and uh, we're going to pass in the x input for the x and then a zero <coughs> and then the z input um, what we can do is similar to what we did with the clamping of the uh, pitch is we can we can clamp this so that it doesn't go above speed and um, otherwise you can actually cheat and go faster uh, without this clamping you can actually go faster diagonally than you can horizontally or vertically which just seems a bit odd so um, in its simplest form, we're just going to clamp it to the to the speed. So we're just going to say um, move equals, and we use the vector three dot clamp magnitude. So that will say we'll um, just clamp it to a certain value. So we're going to say we we'll clamp the move vector um, into the maximum length, which was would be speed. So we don't want it to go any faster than speed. So if we're going diagonal, we'll not go faster than that. Um, and then the magic happens. So we're just going to say uh, we're going to change this move vector again into um, we're going to use the transform dot transform vector. Um, and what that does is that just um, takes the current rotation and, and scale and position of the of a particular value that you pass in and translates it relative to that vector. So if it's rotated a little bit it will give you a different vector which will be exactly the same vector after it's been rotated by that. So if we pass this move value in, um, what we're going to do is uh, just transform it by however we rotated. So we'll get exactly the right vector back in. 
Um, if you want to look up the documentation on that, it's a little bit confusing and mathematical, but the bottom line is you take this transform to change this vector, um, whatever you pass to it, um, into one relative to this transform, so that you move in, if you've got a vector that's forward, it doesn't matter what this transforms, it will be relative, it will be transforming forward relative to this. So uh, it should work perfectly for our needs. Um, what we've not done, however, is we've not used this move vector. When we move, when we actually move down here, we, we've we um, set up with the x input and the z input. Um, the problem with the move vector, however, is that we don't yet have this gravity value. So um, we should change that. So um, just take this one out. Um, so we're going to say cc.move. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to move by move plus the gravity. So I'll make a new vector 3. And it should be uh, 0. And then I think it was called y speed and 0. So we're adding on the gravity to the current move vector. Um, I'm going to make sure that we do that first because we put that around in brackets. And then we need to multiply that by time dot delta time. So time dot delta time. So um, it's not missing a brackets, I believe. Am I missing a brackets here? So yeah, I want to make sure that the move plus the vector three is done first. So that this addition is done first. So gravity is added on first before it's multiplied by time dot delta time. Um, that I believe is all that we need. Um, so we'll just save this. It's always good to test, as you know. Um, and if we run back into the code and compile, we should be able to see that the um, first person controller is complete. So we might look at, in the next video, I might do a little bit on refactoring and making this look a bit neater, but we should have a right and left uh, pitch up and down that only goes to certain values we should be able to move relative to where we're facing and the jump should still work all right so um that is a very very basic um and rough piece of code that will uh, give you a very simple first person controller and um, if i manage to make another video it will show you how to uh, refactor that make it a bit neater get some comments in there so we know what we're doing and try and make it a bit more flexible and robust thank you for watching